As we've covered in past episodes, Island Life was previously deleted. If you'd like to find out more on the situation, please watch our last video as we've covered this in the past and this should explain things more. The video is titled, Island Life Deleted, Deca Box Banned, Good Grief. I'd appreciate if you'd watch this video first. Now onwards to part two. Island Life last month was deleted without notice, including the studio Playcrate, which develops the famous game Island Life. The game Island Life focuses on family themed, where players can buy a house or roleplay or do whatever they please. The game was very popular, amassing over 100 million visits. With the deletion of the game, many were upset, but it was divided previously. The game was also popular with trolls, being featured in countless of their YouTube videos. Now, let's skip forward two months. The developer has promised that Playcrate would be providing refunds as a new Game Pass with your old Game Passes as IDs, and that they would be doing their best to get the game back up again. Lead developer Decabox felt uneasy, concerned, and quite frankly devastated after he learned his game was not going to be coming back. So far, Decabox, also known as Banners, attempts to get his IP back from deletion have been very, very messy. His fights with Roblox admins, and now his studio has gone as desperate as to possibly take legal action and sue. A lot more has happened since. There is a lot more also to cover in this video, so please sit tight. Constant tweets from Decabox have fueled the fire in his fight to receive his old account and game back, as well as his studio. Others have joined in his fight to receive his game back. Things are getting heated. However, this brings us to our main question. Could Roblox be possibly sued by Decabox regarding one of his tweets? And will this work? As well, how are things holding up for the rest of the developers, builders, and more on the team? My name's Nuki Alex, and this is our Roblox drama series, where we review the full story and perspective of both sides. Let's get started. Yo, what's up, Past Chain Nerd Squad, and welcome back to another video. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe so that way you never miss out on the latest Roblox drama, news, tips and tricks, and more. Don't forget to like the video and turn on the bell so that way you never miss out on one of my videos, which happen weekly. This video will be worded a bit differently. In order to avoid bias, we'll be looking at both sides of the story. Firstly, we'll be reading the tweets from Decabox himself. Then, we'll try and see Decabox's side as well as Roblox's side to get a fair perspective on the topic. Let's first start with Decca's side. Let's read some tweets from Decabox firstly, and also some images attached from Roblox as well regarding his moderation notes and what has happened since. I've already covered most of these tweets in our last episode, so I'll be picking up the tweets that I feel are important along with the new updated tweets. Picking up for where we left off on 4.17pm March 24th, 2020, Banner at Decabox tweets, still waiting for a response from Roblox. On March 24th, 2020, Banner at Decabox tweets, sorry if I've been less responsive on tweets or DMS. I've just been really demotivated as you can imagine, and my main focus daily is trying to get this solved. A lot are also mentioning in the comments that he's had a very rough year. Honestly, I can agree. He's had his account terminated twice, and both of them for reasons that he says he didn't do. However, some of the evidence refutes this, which a lot of people are also saying in the comments. About this tweet, he has also made more previous deleted tweets before this about him just panicking, trying to get his studio back as he's almost lost everything from this. No offense to him, but I feel these tweets will not help the professional side of his case. He is absolutely allowed to be upset, but obsessing over this daily is not healthy and will not resolve his game back. In the case of tweets earlier that I left out as well, most of them were just tweets like anxiety, etc. I feel he should vent to his trusted friends the more emotional side of this aspect instead of tweeting this all out. Again, I understand this is stressful, but taking a breather, collecting your thoughts, and only tweeting out, hey, this happened to other people too and here's why I didn't do it, style of written tweets 
will help his case a lot more if a fast track is on his case. Although we all know with Roblox moderation that this is very, very slim, but ultimately he is trying everything to get his IP back. Later, it seems he's calmed down. Banner says on March 25th that there's an announcement soon. Next, he says, Everyone please be patient. I know you're really curious, but I need time if I want to do things properly. It's not the best news, but it's good news. I really appreciate all your support during this tough time. You're the best friends and fans I could ever ask for. That's sweet. It looks like he's getting things together. The next week, he says he's hoping to let out information sometimes next week. May 2nd, 2020, Banner lets out some very important information. I can imagine Roblox getting in big legal trouble soon if they don't stop these false bans that aren't reviewed. I'm just gonna remind everyone that Playcrate holding a game with 100 million plus visits dozens of employees and many YouTube partners got falsely banned for selling Roblox. Now, a lot of people are also saying that he planned to take this legal action further until someone stops someone. Therefore, I was not clickbaiting on this title. Now, I think this legal advice will not work out personally, and I'll explain that in one of the next points. The next tweet now says, If you think everyone is just shady BTS and that all bans are fair, I'm sorry, but you're blind. I can name seven unfair ban cases that happened in the last month, me being one of them. I'm really starting to consider seeking a lawyer, and that's all I'm going to say publicly for now. Personally, this case is not going to work out even with a lawyer. It seems his tweets are getting more and more heated, as he also shoots out a bit more jabs towards Roblox. That's all the evidence I feel is worth noting, although Decobox has many more tweets other than his account. If you'd like to see them, you can go onto twitter.com slash decobox underscore in the description. Most of these tweets are just mini jabs at Roblox. For example, this doesn't work, all these other people got banned, etc. Now, on to our next point. Would this actually hold up in court? I may be a high school grade law and civics student, but I still know some things. Just saying. to be mean, but Roblox's terms of use specifically prevent him from even going to court in the first place. Let's read. In particular, we want to point out by that accepting these terms, you and we are agreeing to arbitrate any dispute between us, and you are giving up your right to go to court either individually, except for matters that may be taken as small claims court, or as part of a class action except as otherwise provided by the European General Data Protection Regulation. See the dispute regulation and arbitration section below for details. As we know, Decabox does not live in the US and he actually lives in some European country. So I'm not sure how this case is going to work in particular, but Roblox definitely has a higher chance in winning. I think he will probably lose this case if he does take it to court, just because it says so in Roblox's terms of use also that they have a right to terminate your account for whatever reason they please, which is going to be the reason he would probably take them to court. Although I do not see how he would take this to small claims court, when he is especially mentioning others' cases. He cannot take a class action lawsuit against Roblox as well. Roblox reserves the right to terminate their account for whatever they want and they can refuse service to you. So ultimately, if they don't want to restore this account, it's their choice. It's their website, like we cannot do anything about it. By complaining that, oh yeah, I was unfair, of course we want it back up. But the only solution that I really see for Decabox at this point is to start a new studio and do it all over again, as unfortunate as it is. We just can't be naive in this case because Roblox has terminated thousands of accounts before and they've terminated his account once again. He probably will not have any leverage against Roblox and I don't feel he is going to get his account back, unfortunately. Let's move on to our community opinion. Let's read some community tweets in the replies of Decabox for an idea of how the community feels on the situation. My friend Fultrek says, from what I've seen in the past and based on your video, it seems like an honest mistake from Roblox. 
Like, I see why they could have mistaken you for it. However, they should have listened to you and fixed it once you've explained the full situation. This tweet from Pang Baby says, They need to be called out more for this. They're a company and they banned a lot of people for bad reasons. Of course they are the boss, but we are the clients, right? So why don't they behave better? This tweet seems in mere spirits, but it says, They can ban anyone they want, it's their game, doofus. Now, let's summarize the video. A lot of people feel that Decabox should sue, but he doesn't actually have any merit to sue. And will the game be back up soon? Possibly yes, but possibly no. It's really a confusing situation. Thank you so much for watching my video. I'd appreciate if you'd subscribe. I'm sorry this video came out a bit late, but I hope you guys like the mean references in here. See you all in the next video. Oh, yeah.